My dear friends, today I want to speak to you something which touches all of our lives. Every single person. The word of God in the book of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 35. Isaiah and chapter 35 verses 8 onwards. But I just read verse 8. This is what is written. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it. But it shall be for God's people. There is a particular way on which the unclean cannot travel. There is a way on which the, it's, it's a holy way only, only God's people can travel on it. The question is, the question is, are you and I included or excluded on this way? That is the question. Because there is a way, it is God's holy way, it is a way on which the unclean cannot travel, and it is a way on which God's people can travel. The question is whether you and I are included or excluded. And so I pick up that word unclean. I pick up that word unclean and then we try and reflect on that. Now in the Old Testament, there were many things which were called unclean. You know, you touch a dead body, you were unclean for seven days. You touched an unclean animal, you were unclean. Uh, certain animals were designated as unclean. You touched them, you were unclean. You touched a leper, you were unclean. You were separated from the so-called clean people. Then you had to do some rituals and then you are included back again into the, into the common group, into the so-called clean people. But my dear friends, now, when Jesus came, he moved all of religion from the sphere of external ob observances to the internal. He moved it out from just a few rituals to a disposition of the heart. To a disposition of the heart. What are you thinking? What are you imagining? What are you reflecting upon? What are you deliberating upon? That becomes the question. What is your intention? I'll give you an example. I slap, you know, one of you on the face. Is it a good act or a bad act? Yeah? Bad act. Okay. Now, there's a mosquito sitting on your face, so I slap to kill the mosquito. Good act or bad act? Same act? Same act? Good act or bad act? Now, the mosquito I know is a mosquito which ca carries malaria. Good act or bad act? Even better, right? Right? Now, it's the same act. But now, you're changing it. You're changing the definition. You told me good act first. Now you say it's bad act. Why? The intention. What matters is the intention in, behind the action. You smile at some girl. Good act or bad act? You look to the other side. Good act or bad act? Uh, let me ask you, you look at this side. Everybody will say it's terrible. But suppose one guy has fallen there and he's sick and you have medical, you have some medical experience. You look at that side, good act or bad act? The intention matters. What is inside your heart matters. And that is why Jesus took the action from the outside, moved it to the inside and said, what is the intention with which you're doing the action? That decides whether it is right in the eyes of God or unrighteous in the eyes of God. And so, my dear friends, today, when we look at this whole aspect of purity, because God calls us to be pure, we will just not reflect on what is outside. The external is one thing, but we will look at what is on the inside, what drives you, what motivates you, what makes you do what you do. Why do you do certain things? You know, in the Old Testament, there was a person. He's a very famous person. 
He's the strongest man in the Bible. Who was he? Who was he? Samson. Samson was born through an intervention of God. His mother was told, you cannot eat anything unclean. You cannot drink any strong drink. And so Samson was born. Samson grew up. And Samson, the power of the spirit was stirring him, the Bible says. The book of Judges, chapter 13 onwards, you can read about his birth. But I want to focus on one thing about Samson. In chapter 14, suddenly we see a certain tendency of Samson. You know what his tendency? He went to Philistia. He saw a particular girl and he told his, and he told his parents, I want that girl to be my wife. Now the Philistines were not, were not of the chosen race. Judges chapter 14 verse 1 onwards. Judges chapter 14 verse 1 onwards. The Philistines were not the people of the chosen race. And his parents told him, can't you find any girls in Israel? Do you have to go to those others? He said, no, she pleases me. I want her. Got married to her. There was a, you know, I don't get into the details of that. You can read about it later. There was some kind of a conflict with the Philistines. Within one day, his wife was taken and given to his best man. Is there in the Bible? I didn't make it up. It was given to his companion. She was given to his companion, the best man. First marriage ended in one day. Then we come to chapter 16. Then we come to chapter 16 of the book of Judges. In chapter 16, the Bible says that Samson went down to Gaza. Now that's a place again outside the, the promised land. Outside, he went to Gaza. And there he saw a prostitute and he went and had a physical relationship with her. So you see the tendency of Samson. He saw, he desired, he did. And that is, the, that is the path that most of us take. We see, we desire, and then we get into all kinds of things. What are you seeing? What are you looking at? What are you desiring? And what are you doing? See the progression. It starts with that look. It progresses to desire. Then it moves ahead to the action. And so this is what Samson did. Samson saw he desired, he did. His enemies, the Philistines, you know what they did? They closed the gates of the town. They said, we have trapped him now. This woman, he has gone into this woman. But Samson, the Bible says, got up at midnight. They had locked the huge gate. He was so strong, he lifted up the whole gate and walked out. He escaped. He escaped. Just a few verses later, a few verses later, the Bible says, Samson fell in love. Now that's the first time I've seen that expression somewhere. You know, I always wonder why they say you fall in love. You know, it's like you're walking on the road and suddenly there's a banana peel, you slip and there you're down. Samson fell in love. I don't know how many have fallen here. I knew you're sitting on the chairs, but maybe there are some who have fallen. Samson fell in love with a woman of the valley of Sorek, again, an outsider, not somebody from the chosen race. Her name was Delilah. I hope there are no Delilahs in the crowd. But her name was Delilah, and Samson got married to her. So we see this trend in Samson. He sees, he desires, but in this case, he fell in love with this woman. And then, when he fell in love, the Philistines came to this woman and said, find out, how is he so strong? What makes him so strong? He's able to kill, he was able to kill thousand with the jawbone of a donkey. He was so strong. What made him so strong? They couldn't understand. So he told her all kinds of things. He told her, if you tie me with uh, seven uh, bowstrings, 
my strength will go she tied him when he was sleeping the philistines came he broke the bro strings and he chased them away he should have learned his lesson but he did not he should have learned his lesson but he did not maybe we should have learned our lessons many times but we do not because the desire is greater you know one day i was taking a walk on a particular football ground and one young boy maybe your age he came to me and said to me brother i need to speak to you i said tell me he said you know brother i have a girlfriend I said okay but every time i meet this girl i fall into sexual sin i said okay so what do you want to do brother i don't want to commit the sin i said very good can you pray for me i said sure so we sat and i said i will say a prayer please repeat after me he said okay so i said lord and he also said lord if it is your will and he also said if it is your will that this girl remain with me that this girl remain with me then let her remain and he said the prayer then i said but lord he also said but lord if it is not your will he became a little slower if it is not your will that this girl remain with me he was very hesitant to say the prayer to say this girl that this girl remain then take her away he said wait 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 brother stop 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 i said what happened what if she really goes away he wants to stop the sin but he doesn't want to give up the darling we can't walk in two directions we cannot walk in both directions you make a choice you walk in that direction he came to me and he said i want to pray to give up the sin i said fine let's do it some of you here maybe are struggling with pornography i challenge you do one thing where's your laptop in your bedroom right bring it to the hall i challenge you to watch them where your mother is there where your parents are there do it do it you know god you know when he moved the israelites out of egypt you know what he did there were 10 plagues right there were 10 plagues the frogs came the gnats came the locusts came all kinds of things came right the river nile turned into blood you know uh, all, all kinds of things happened you know what god was doing these were the very things that the egyptians worshiped the frogs the gnats the nile even the pharaoh's son was considered to be a god and that is the first born son and that is why god said god said the first born will die all the gods of egypt were judged why so that the israelites would not go back there they would be abhorrent to the egyptians even the sheep even the sheep were worshiped by the egyptians what what did god say cut the neck of the sheep take them and sacrifice them you falling into pornography cut the neck of your uh, of your phone no don't take and cut it cut your internet connection you cannot you cannot stop yourself cut the internet connection do it i challenge you god will bless you others you know what you do you still get those phones go to the shop and ask for a nokia phone you know those old ones 32103310 usme kuch nahi rehta hai usme internet nahi rehta kuch nahi rehta wo leke aao get that why because you are taking a concrete action not to go back to egypt god did not want the israelites to go back to egypt so god what did he do finished off all the things the egyptians worshiped the nile they worship the nile turn it into blood they worship frogs bring the frogs kill them they worship the sheep you cut them and kill them what is preventing you from turning back to god and what is causing you to go back again and again again and again to those things which are haunting you which are destroying your life i challenge you give it up you know years back many of you would have heard glen right speak 
you know, the former musician. I was heavily into rock music. Very heavily into rock music. All kinds of stuff. Head banging, which would put my head into the speaker and do all kinds of nonsense. After I heard him speak, I had a, lot, I had a huge collection. I don't want to, you know, the ACDCs and the Megadeth and the Metallica. I went home and destroyed the CDs. So I don't want to keep this. My dear friends, sometimes you have to be a little radical. You can't compromise. There are certain things we cannot compromise with. We're playing with fire. You know, there's a verse in the Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19. The word of God says, By rejecting conscience, certain persons have made a shipwreck of their faith. I repeat that. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19. By rejecting conscience, certain persons have made a shipwreck of their faith. You know what's a shipwreck? Many of you would have seen the movie The Titanic. Or is that movie too old? You know, like, am I from an older generation that you know that you don't know what the Titanic is? Hmm? You heard of this guy called Leonardo DiCaprio? Heard of him? Okay. So I, I know I'm old, but maybe still somewhere in between. So, here was, here was a ship which the builders said cannot be sunk even by God. That's the statement they made. They were Freemasons who made the ship. They said, this ship cannot be sunk even by God. It was on its first voyage. And it left from port. It sailed from England. And on the way, it was hit we know, by an iceberg, and it sank. That's a shipwreck. That means it set out from one place, it was going to some other place, but on the way, something happened, and the, and the water comes in. The water had to stay out, the water comes in, the weight is too much, and the ship sank. Your life and my life of faith is that way. We have set out from port. We are going from here to eternity. And we are journeying. Along the way, we meet many obstacles. But along the way, if there is, there, is an, there is something which hits us, what can happen? The waters of the world can rush in. The waters of the world can rush in. It can weigh us down and we will start sinking. My dear friends, have the water, waters of the world started rushing into your life? Have the waters of the world started entering your life? Have the waters of impurity started soiling your purity? Have the waters of this world defiled your holiness? Then I tell you, the ship will start sinking. And when the ship starts sinking, it becomes heavier and heavier. And eventually it cannot move. Is your life and my life in that, going in that manner? The Titanic sank. And my dear friends, you and I are called by God to sail from here to eternity. Not to get stuck with these defiling currents of the world here. But we are supposed to move. We are supposed to keep going. We are supposed to keep traveling. We are supposed to keep sailing. Don't let the waters of the world defile you. My dear friends, we are talking about Samson. First, he told about the bowstrings. She tried. He broke the bowstrings. Then he said, you have, to, you have to tie me with seven new ropes, which have never been used. I will not be able, I'll become weak. She, put him, she tied him with seven new ropes. She tied him with seven new ropes. He should have understood, but he didn't understand. He should have understood that she did not care for him. She was paid. She was offered silver pieces by the lords of the Philistines. She didn't care for him. Maybe there are people after your money. 
Maybe there are people after your body. Maybe there are women who are trying to just use you. I do not know. She didn't care for him. She wanted the money which they were offering. You know what she did? She put him to sleep on her lap. And this man slept. Samson slept. The Bible records it. And then, again, again he broke free with the seven fresh ropes. And you know what she complained? You're not telling me the truth. You don't love me. Hello? Her complaint, you don't love me. You're not telling me the truth. You're making me a fool of myself in front of my people. Hello, you're trying to kill him. And she complains that he doesn't love her. So then he told her the third thing. He said, you put seven pins in my hair. I'll become weak. He's coming closer. His strength was in his hair. He's coming closer. He told about the bowstrings. It was on his body. He told about the ropes. That was on his body. Now he's coming closer to his secret. He says, put seven pins in my hair. I will become weak. She puts it in his hair. He's still able to untie the pins and he becomes strong again. He chases them out. He should have learned his lesson, but he did not learn his lesson. Are we learning our lessons from all the heartbreaks we've had? Are we learning our lessons from all the defilements of the flesh we've gone through? Are we learning our lessons? I remember once, I'd gone to pray in a particular chapel on a Sunday afternoon. I was sitting at the back. This is before COVID. And there was this young girl, maybe your age, maybe around 18, 19, who came and sat in front. First time I'm seeing her, I do not know. I've never seen her before. I hear a voice in my head telling me, go and tell her not to fall into sexual sin. Now, I don't know this girl from Adam. And I thought to myself, she's a girl, I'm a guy. I tell her something like this, she'll think, you know, I may get a few slaps, so I better stay away. She goes her way, I go my way. I didn't do anything. She went. Two weeks later, another Sunday, I'm sitting in the same place, same girl walks in, sits in the same place, I hear the same voice. Tell her not to fall into sexual sin. And this time, I said, God, if this is you, why don't you find some other girl to tell her, you know, you can find somebody else, she's a girl, I'm a guy, don't you think it's better to tell somebody else? I didn't do anything. Another month later, I was standing outside that prayer room. This girl comes walking by. And I was standing, to, standing and talking to a friend of mine. And as we were chatting, I saw this girl. Third time the voice comes. Tell her not to fall into sexual sin. This time I was not, alo I was, I was not alone. So I, I, I gathered some courage and I called her. I said, excuse me. She said, what happened? I asked her, are you in a relationship? She said, who are you? So I, 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 then this friend of mine said, do, you don't know him. He gives talks for retreats and things like that. I don't know. She said, no, no, I don't know him. Then she looked at me and she said, I'm not in any relationship. I said, praise God. Please don't fall into sexual sin. I said, I've said it. You know, done. Over. She said, no, no, nothing like that. There's nothing like that, she said. And this poor girl, she had come to pray in the prayer room. She was so flustered. She turned and walked right out of the church. She walked out. And I thought, okay, I've said it. It's over. And then this girl walked out. And after three minutes, she came walking back in. And she said to me, excuse me. I said, okay, I'm going to get it now. I thought it was done and over with. I said, I'm going to get it now. I said, what happened? She said, why did you ask me that? I said, I'm very sorry. Please be, forgive me for being so blunt. But I saw you six weeks back. You sat there. I sat here. I this." This voice came in my head. I did not tell you. And you went away. I went away. Two weeks after that, I saw you for the second time. You sat there. I sat there. I saw you. The voice came. I did not say anything. You went away. I went away. Today is the third time. I'm very sorry, you know, for being, but you know, this, it was insistent. So I told you. Tears started rolling down her cheeks. And she said to me, two weeks back, my boyfriend who's on the ship, 
he came. We were sitting in an isolated place. He forced me and I lost my virginity. And she started to cry. At that time, tears rolled down my cheeks thinking, if only I had listened and warned her, maybe she would have been protected. God knows, my dear friends. God cares for each one of us. He looks into our heart. He desires that you and I live in holiness. He needs you and me. Our, our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Do not defile your bodies. Do not use your bodies like a rag which is used and thrown away. For many people it is just like that. They use others and just throw them by the wayside. You're precious. God needs you. God wants you. God wants you to be holy. And so Samson, we come back to our dear friend Samson. What happened to him? He saw, he desired, he fell in love. Now he's under the spell, under the grip of this woman. He breaks free the third time. He should have learned his lesson, but he did not learn his lesson. He continues. He continues. Then the Bible says the, his wife Delilah nagged him day and night. Day and night, she kept nagging him and nagging him and nagging him. She told him, ah, you don't love me, you don't care for me, you're making a fool of me, you're not telling me the truth, how can you say you love me? Hello, she's wanting to kill him, it's so plain and obvious. Finally, he was tired to death, the Bible says, and he told her his secret. I have never been shaved from my birth. I'm a Nazarite. That means I'm a person set apart. You and I, we are persons set apart. Your strength is your purity. Bishop Fulton Sheen said, Bishop Fulton Sheen said, the devil goes after the pure. The others are already his. The devil goes after the pure. The others are already his. They belong to him. Who do you belong to? Are you fighting? Are you giving in? Are you holding on? Are you letting go? And so my dear friends, Samson was so tired to death, he told her, and then what happens? She puts him to sleep. Imagine the sleep. She shaves his head in her lap. Come on, what kind of a sleep was this? Somebody touches you during your sleep, you wake up, right? Little noise, you wake up. She shaves his entire head, which had not been shaved from his birth. I don't know, maybe he was 30 years old. Can you imagine? And then his strength was gone. He thought he can break himself free. They tied him. And you know what is the first thing they did? When they, after they tied him, they gouged out his eyes. They cut out his eyes. The very thing we used to sin is the very thing which is targeted. He used it. He saw. He desired. He did. His eyes were cut out. His eyes used to see and desires to enter. What are your eyes looking at? Jesus said, Jesus said, your eye is the lamp of the body. Your eye is a lamp of the body. And he says, examine and see if the light in you is darkness or it is not. What is in you? Is it darkness? My dear friends, Samson should have learned his lesson. But he didn't learn his lesson. He kept playing with it. He knew she wanted to kill him. But he kept playing and he kept playing. Until she got him finally. You know, one day I got a call from a, you know, very upset mother. And she said, please pray for my son. I said, what happened to your son? She said, he's in the hospital. I said, what happened to him? Why did he land in the hospital? She said, he was bitten by a snake. I said, okay. What happened? He went into the field or something? She said, no. He had gone to catch snakes. I said, why? 
Oh, he's in the habit of going to, if somebody's house, the snake enters, he goes and catches them. I said, oh, okay. So he got bitten at that time while catching. No, 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 he had already caught the snake. Then what was he doing? No, 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 he was showing off. He was patting the, Russell's viper, by the way. Russell's viper. He was patting the snake and he was kissing the snake to show off to the people. The snake bit him. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. I said, I'll pray for him. The word of God says, Sirach chapter 21 verse 2, flee from sin as you flee from a snake. And here was this guy kissing the snake. <laughs> and in the hospital, that to a Russell's viper. So we have all kinds of characters. And so here was Samson playing with Delilah. She knew he wanted to, she knew, I mean, he knew that she wanted to kill him. He knew that she was after him. She was, you know, bringing his, uh, her people and trying to bind him. But he kept closing his eyes to it. What are you closing your eyes to? I go back to that verse which I took. By rejecting conscience, certain people have made a shipwreck of their faith. You know, the iceberg hitting the Titanic and the water or entering is like we rejecting our conscience. You know what's a conscience? What's a conscience? What is a conscience? We hear, hear the word of God, we hear the voice of God. You know, when I speak, when I speak, the sound comes from where? What do you hear? Where, did it, where does it come from? From the speaker, right? It comes from the speaker. I speak into the mic, but you're hearing it from there. God speaks. That speaker inside is called the conscience. You hear that, you hear that, uh, uh, you know, the, the voice of God. But don't think that, you know, that every person's conscience will hear the voice of God. Why? Suppose if this speaker is, is faulty, it's not clean, you know, COVID was there, so for, you know, maybe two years it was locked up, all cockroaches have gone inside, rats have gone inside, squirrels have gone inside, and they're all inside, and they're all staying there. You think you'll hear something? You think you'll hear something? You may hear some squeal, squealing and all because rats are inside, squirrels are inside, right? You'll not hear the voice of the speaker. You'll hear something else. So the conscience has to be formed. You know, when I take, when I take a ruler and I say this is now 10 centimeters, who decides that length? Who decides it? I can take a this big length and say this is 10 centimeters, is that okay? Or the clock, the time, who decided now it is 2.38 by my watch? Who decided it is 2.38? There is somewhere a standard, right? You set your clocks, your watches, your ruler against a certain standard. That standard decides whether the time is right, the length is right, all those things are decided by the standard. In the same way, our conscience has to be formed against a standard, and that standard is the Word of God. The Word of God, if it is, you would examine your conscience in the light of the Word of God, and then it reveals whether the stand, your, your conscience is as per the standard or not. And if it is as per the standard, you will hear the voice of God telling you, do this, don't do this, go this side, don't go this side, don't meet this person, don't go to that person's place, you'll get into trouble. The question is, do we listen? Do we listen? I remember, you know, I still, uh, you know, I remember once I was, uh, listening to a girl, counseling a girl at a particular retreat center. This girl was, you know, maybe one of the most beautiful girls I've seen. Looks like maybe any fashion model or actress or whatever. But this girl, when I was praying for her, I realized 
has tried suicide many times. And I asked her, why do you do this? You wanted to jump off a bridge, why? And then she said to me, because of that voice. I said, what voice? This girl was in the habit of watching horror movies. She was addicted. She would keep watching horror movies. And then she said, one day she heard that voice. I said, what voice did you hear? She said, I heard that voice clearly, which said to me, you don't belong to God, you belong to me. I said, why don't you stop watching? Why don't you stop watching those movies? He wants to destroy you. Satan wants to finish you. Why don't you stop? She said, the vo voice allures me. I couldn't believe it. She said, once you've heard that voice, you want to hear that voice again and again. It is too alluring. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. Here was this girl being pushed by Satan to commit suicide. And here was this girl telling me that she loved to hear the allure in that voice. Whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice is alluring you? Is it the voice of the shepherd, the good shepherd who takes you to life, gives you life in all its fullness? Or is it the voice of the one who comes to steal, to kill and to destroy? This girl was being allured and she wanted it. My dear friends, let's come back to our senses. We have been called by God to be holy. We've been called by God to be pure. You know, the story is told of a young girl in an American college. She was the only virgin in her class. And all the other girls were, were, you know, doing whatever they wanted. And they used to keep relating all the stories. They had gone out with this guy, they had gone with that guy. They went to this party, they went to that party. They did this, they did that. And this girl, they used to make fun of her. They should tell her you're old-fashioned. They should tell her you're like this. You're, you know, you're not go, go moving with the times. One day, this girl said to her friends, you know, my friends, if I want, I can be like any of you in a moment. But even if all of you want and are willing to pay all the money in the world, none of you can ever become like me again. What is lost is lost forever. And it's not just for girls. What is lost is lost forever. Do not let your bodies be defiled. Do not let your thoughts be defiled. Sirach chapter 21 verse 11 says, everyone who, who obeys the law controls his thoughts. Flee from impure thoughts. Wisdom chapter 1 verse 5, wisdom chapter 1 verse 5, a uh, a uh, uh, good and holy soul will flee at the sight of corrupted thoughts. Are you fleeing or welcoming? Samson fell in love. His eyes were dis taken out. And that is what happens. And St. Francis of Assisi said, Satan comes and first ties you with a hair. He ties you with a hair. And you think you can break it anytime. Then he comes and ties you with a string. And you think you can break it anytime. Then he comes and ties you with a rope. And you think you can break it anytime. And then he says, he comes and ties you with a chain and makes you do whatever he wants. And that is what happened to Samson. His eyes were taken out. You know what they did? They took him tied him between two pillars and they made him perform. The enemies of God made him perform for them, dance for them. And that is what Satan does. We think we are free. We think we can do all these things. We think we'll be happy. And Satan shows us all those false promises and tells us, you do this, you'll be happy. You go here, you'll be happy. You be with this girl, you'll be happy. You Hello, doesn't work. 
It doesn't work. You're never satisfied. You know, I remember I had a retreat in Tabor. You know, there the boys sit on this side, the girls sit on this side. And after a particular talk, one young boy, maybe around 20, 21 years old, he came to meet the father, the director. And he said to him, Father, after listening to your talk, I have decided to give up all my girlfriends. Father said, all your girlfriends? How many do you have? He said, Father, he, he was 23 years old, by the way. Sorry, I made a mistake. He was 23 years old. He said, I have decided to give up all my girlfriends. Father asked him, how old are you? He said, I'm 21. How many girlfriends do you have? He said, Father, uh, I, he said, I'm 23. I've got 21 girlfriends, he said. 21 girlfriends, 23 years old. So father, you know, joked with him and said, why didn't you get two more girlfriends? You know, it would have matched 23 years old, 23 girlfriends would have been good, right? It would have been a balance. No, 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 father, he said, I'm serious. After listening to your talk, I've decided to give up all my girlfriends. I said, father said, very good. So he said, father, you're the director of the center, right? Father said, yes. You must be having a lot of influence around this place, right? Father said, why? He said, you know, Father, I was sitting at that corner. And I looked on the other side. The problem starts there. I looked on the other side. And Father, in that corner, I saw a girl. Every time I look at her father, she looks like Mother Mary, and I think I'm like St. Joseph. He will only put in a word, Father, I will give up all the 21 and I'm sure I think she will be my life partner. Hello, no chance. We just keep changing. Today is this, tomorrow is that, tomorrow that one, this. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. We find our rest in God. St. Augustine, the man who lived with a woman outside of marriage from the age of 16, his mother pursued him, chased him. She, he gave up that woman, brought another woman, had a child by that woman outside marriage. His mother kept pursuing him, St. Monica. Kept pursuing him. Gave up that woman. I think he had three women or something. And many others along the way. Until finally one day, he said to God, God, I want to be holy, but not now. I want to be holy, but not now. And maybe many of you are thinking, okay, I'm young right now. This, you know, I, let, let, let's just park this for a while, you know. Let, just as we park the car, let's just park this for a while. I'll think about it. Maybe when I'm old and I'm wizened and I'm walking around with a, with a, with a stick, maybe I'll think about it. Hello, you and I don't know whether what happened to Samson will happen to us. Samson was young and strong when his eyes were taken out. Samson was strong when his eyes were taken out. He was, he was healthy when his eyes were taken out. We do not know what can happen to us. You know, Samson was made to perform. And when his eyes were taken out, he could not see anymore. And his hair started to grow. His strength started coming back again. And then he pushed the pillars. And the entire building came crashing down. He killed 3,000 of the Philistines at one shot when he pushed the building down. When his eyes were closed, his strength started to return. Maybe we have already defiled our strength, our purity. I've spoken just about one aspect of purity. Purity is a broad subject which covers a lot of things. But I've basically spoken about the purity and wholeness of the body. The purity of our intentions. And my dear friends, remember, God calls you and me that when when the, when the body is pure, then God can speak. God can reveal. 
God can do a lot of things. You know, one of the patron saints of purity, of chastity, is uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Thomas Aquinas was a young man who wanted to join the Dominican order, but his family, which was a, like, you know, a very noble family, they didn't want it. Because he would be like a, a, a kind of a beggar as a priest. They didn't want it. You know what they did? They imprisoned him for two years. And to top it off, you know what they did? Sent a prostitute into his prison cell to tempt him. His own family, his own mother and brothers. Can you imagine? So the temptations can come from anywhere. The defilement can come from anywhere. But what did Thomas Aquinas do? There was a fire burning in the fireplace. He put his hand into the fire, took out a burning log, and chased that prostitute away, holding the burning log in his hand. And angels appeared to him and put a cincture around his waist and said, never again will you be tormented by thoughts of impurity. And that is why he's called the angelic doctor. St. Thomas Aquinas is called the angelic doctor. One of the greatest theologians who has ever lived. And he could, he could think about God because of the purity. Many of us cannot think because our, 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 our uh, uh, mind is defiled and corrupted. A young boy was brought to Tabor. 90% blind. 90% blind. From the age of nine, from the age of nine, this boy started watching pornography. For hours, his parents thought he was studying. He would watch in the night. Keep watching. Until by the age of 18, or I think he was 19, he was legally blind, 90% blind. The way you sin, you'll be punished. He had to be held by the hand and brought anywhere for the sessions and all that. Father said, let him stay here because he couldn't go to college anymore. He couldn't go because he couldn't see. Father said, let him stay here. He stayed for three months. Somebody would bring him to the prayer room after the, he attended one retreat. After that, he was taken to the prayer room and made to sit there. The prayer room on the ground floor. He would be brought for the meals, be served, eat his meals, taken back to the prayer room. Slowly, the defiled, corrupted mind started getting clean, sitting in front of the blessed sacrament, the sun. The light of the sun warms you whether you believe it or not. When the light of the sun falls on you, even if you don't believe that the sun exists, you will be warm. When you sit in front of the blessed sacrament, the pure light coming from the blessed sacrament will start cleansing you whether you believe it or not. And so this boy started sitting there three months until, like what happened to St. Paul, suddenly from St. Paul's eyes, scales fell from his eyes. And Paul was blind for three days, could see again. This boy was blind, and for three months he was there in Tabor, until finally something like scales fell from his eyes, and he could see again. Believe it if you want to believe it. Do not believe it if you do not want to believe it. For those who believe, no proof is necessary. For those who do not believe, no proof is sufficient. God can heal you if you have defiled yourself, if you have corrupted yourself, if you have given into all kinds of lust and impurity, God can still call you and make you whole and pure. There are so many examples. I talked about St. Augustine. There are so many saints, Mary Magdalene and so many others who have lived terrible lives but who have come back to the Lord and who were purified and made holy by Him. He can do it. If you give Him a chance, He will do it. 
I remember a friend of mine. He was, he lived a terrible life before he changed. Into gangs, fights, all kinds of things. Alcohol, drugs, women, pornography, all kinds of things. He gave up everything after he experienced the Lord, after he encountered the Lord. He gave up everything, gave up the alcohol, gave up the dr drugs, gave up the women. One gave up pornography, one habit remained. The sin of masturbation. Every single day. I know I'm very blunt when I'm speaking, but I speak bluntly. But this boy had this problem. He couldn't stop it. Until one day, he had an inspiration. He wanted to stop it, but he would give in. So one day, he had an inspiration. He said, every time I fall into this sin, I will go for confession. That day, he, in the night, he fell into the sin. Next day, he got up and went to his parish priest and said, Father, I want to confess. He confessed. Father absolved him. He went back home. That night, he fell into the sin again. Next day, he went back to father and said, Father, I want to confess. Father listened to his confession, absolved him, and sent him back. Third day, he fell into the sin again. He got up the next day, went to the same father again. Father, I want to confess. Confess the same sin. Until he reached such a stage, every time in the morning, father saw him. Confession. Father knew the sin he was going to tell. He knew the sin he was going to tell. But he overcame his shame and went for confession. After some time, he noticed that he was not falling every day, but started falling twice after two days, three days. After some time, he noticed that he was falling after about a week or so. After some time, he noticed that he was falling after two weeks or so. Then it became in once in a month, after six months of confession, the very next day after falling, he was delivered of that habit completely. I challenge you, do you have the courage to go and tell the truth? As Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, the Samaritan woman said, I have no husband. Jesus said, you have told the truth. And when she told the truth, she was set free. She forgot the water jar she had brought to carry water. That water jar signifies the desires of this world, the water of this world. Maybe you are carrying a water jar. You're carrying that water jar which is not visible today. You filled it with all kinds of desires and you're walking with those desires. You're running with those desires. But I tell you, if you meet the Lord and tell the truth, you will leave your water jar and you'll follow him and you will spread his word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My dear friends, God calls you and me to a life of holiness. I started by saying there is a way which is a holy way. There is a way on which the unclean will not travel. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in spirit. Blessed are the pure in spirit. They will see God. I turn it around. Cursed are the impure. They will not see God. Blessed are the pure. Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery. It's not just for men, by the way. It's for you too. If you look at a man with lust, we commit adultery. My dear friends, as I stop, as I end, I would like to end by giving a true story. You know, by the way, there is no real purity without the Blessed Virgin Mary. No real purity without her. You know, there's this two friends. There were two friends. The fr one guy's name was William. The other guy's name is not known. They were Catholics. This is way back, I think, in the 17th century. They were Catholics, but living terrible lives. They used to go to all kinds of places of sin, like the brothels, and they were like doing all kinds of stuff. But William had a habit. Every day, he used to go back home and he used to say three Hail Marys. 
even after having committed the worst of sin. Don't think I'm giving you a license to say that no, you can do whatever you want, but you say you have to say the three Hail Marys will be fine. Sorry, that's not the idea. Don't say brother said it. So, this William would do this. One particular day, they decided to go to the brothel. But that day, William started feeling something and he said, I'm not coming. He told his friend, I'm not going, you go. His friend said, come, we have decided. He said, no, I'm not coming, you go. He went. And William went to sleep. He said his three Hail Marys and he went to sleep. Suddenly, after midnight, he was woken up by a loud noise. And he saw his friend looking hideous, like an evil spirit, like a demon. But he had his face. And this friend said to him, I have been lost. After I left the brothel, I was met by some bandits. They cut my neck and killed me. And I've been condemned to hell. You have been saved because of your three Hail Marys. And he disappeared. William was shocked. William got up. He ran to that street. He saw his friend lying there with his neck slit. And he ran to the church at three in the morning. Started banging on the door. Father came out and said, what happened? He said, I want to confess. And he told, this is what happened. He confessed. Made a really good confession. William went and joined a monastery. He went as a missionary to China. He was martyred. Today he's blessed William. One was lost. One was saved. What about you?